All right. So, all right. So today we're going to be talking about regular expressions. Um, so regular expressions uh, use the RE library. So you'll want to import RE for every for every part of this. We're also going to be uh, relying fairly heavily on the um, textbook this time around. I'll be following it since uh, I know how to do regular expressions pretty well, but not necessarily in uh, but not necessarily in um, in Python. Um, this is because regular expressions are useful for any programming language. That's why a big part of why I want to uh, uh, teach it. This is also because we've got regular expressions implemented in a lot of other uh, utilities. Like, for instance, in a here I am in LibreOffice Writer, and this could, holds true for Microsoft Word and similar. Where if I want to do a find, and I'm sure you're all familiar with the find replace function, right? Right. You want to search for something in a document and you replace it with something else, right? Well, here. You may notice that, that there's a tick box over here that says regular expressions. So if I click that, I can say, uh, I can do stuff that's not only just like uh, search for is, right, and it's going to find is in all those, but I can also do something like um, a, b, b, so I can do a, b, a, which will search for the combination a, b, a, which, by the way, it doesn't find any because there's none there. If I do A, B, B, A, it will find that one. However, if I start using regular expression notation like this, A, B, star, A, then I start getting awesome results where I get, a w so here it's showing that basically, uh, and we haven't learned about A, B, star, A yet. We haven't learned about the clean star as it's called yet. But what that means is that we're going to be searching for zero or, sorry, at least zero of the preceding character. So A followed by at least zero um, Bs followed by an A. So A, a bunch of Bs, an A, A, B, B, A, 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 and then nothing here because there's no closing A. Then A, B, A, a bunch of Bs, and then A, A. Interesting that it doesn't do a a that doesn't get a b b b a. Why do you think that is? It gets a a over here in a a. It's just because of the way that our the particular search happens to be working. Uh, it's doing a. It's basically trying to find uh, complete the regex a, as soon as possible. So it looks for the so it looked for the smallest possible thing and then continued on from there. It really just depends on how we search that. We'll learn more about that as going through Python. But we also know that I can do this digit notation, slash d, slash d, and it finds 43 just well. So what you learn here will not only apply to Python, right, but will pretty much be a tool you can use everywhere else. So this uh, regexes will feature pretty heavily on your second exam, which will, pro will most likely be in two weeks. So not next week, but the week after on Thursday. In, it'll, and it will be in here. So in two weeks, you can expect your next exam, and it will cover regular expressions, which I hopefully will be able to handle all this week. And it will also cover lists and strings. So a lot of lists and strings, and again, you'll have a practice exam to work with. Okay, so just be aware that your next exam is coming. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at um, about how uh, regular expressions work. So let's go ahead and go to automate the boring stuff. All right, and let's take a look at pattern matching with regular expressions. So um, so let's see. We've learned essentially that there's three parts to doing. Uh, uh, sorry, there's there's a couple ways we can. What we do with to do regular expressions in uh, Python is that we first have to import the regular expression module, which we've done. We've imported re, 
The next thing we need to do is we create a regex object with the compile function using a raw string, and then we can use it to search. We can use it to search um, a string. Can you dim the light in the back? It's hard to see. Oh, yeah. Sorry, didn't even notice. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. All right. So import re, then we create a regular expression using a raw string. We use compile, and then we uh, and then we search for it. So say I wanted to look for anything that was. Um, so say I wanted to look for something that matched the uh, notation of a um, of an x y coordinate, right? Which is as follows, right? So an x y coordinate that's something with a uh, open parentheses, a um, you know some number, some other number and a closing parenthesis. It's possible to write an expression that matches not just this, but anything of this format. And that's kind of the power of regular expressions. So we'll learn how to do that. The first thing we've already learned, so I'm going to review from last time, is how to look up something like a telephone number or a social security number. Right? So I can do something like SSN regex is equal to uh, re.compile. And this says we're going to create a regular expression object that can be used to search for all sorts of things that match a, re that match a regular, exp uh, this particular reg regular expression. So we use a raw string here so that we don't have to type two slashes for D to escape it. So a digit, so let's remember, social security number is three digits followed by a dash, followed by two digits, followed by a dash, followed by four digits. Right? And that's one of many valid ways to do that. We can also say, hey, I want three digits by going like this. I want exactly three of the preceding. So I want exactly three digits, followed by a dash, followed by a digit, how many? Exactly two of them, followed by digit, 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 digit. I could do that, or I can do four. Okay? The next thing I do I can do is that I can, and again I'm reviewing from last time. SSM regex. So now I can say M is equal to match is equal to RE dot search for a pattern. So I'll look for, um, let's see, I'll look for, we already know what the pattern is. So we'll search for the, the string for my SSN is 1111111111. One positional argument, let's see. What did I mess up there? re.compile What did I miss? re.search Oh, re. I used re.search. Sorry. It should be match is equal to ssn regex dot search. And what I want to search for is my ssn I want to search for a reg to see if there's any anything that matches this expression in this string. So we're going to use we're, so we're going to search this string. My SSN is 111 111111. Let's go with 2 match. And so if I print out what matches, it just simply says it's a match object. So if I want to print out the information about that, I say map dot match group which we'll learn a bit more about what it means for the group right uh, in a bit. But that 
is pretty useful. So um, if I do something like this, uh, string is equal to my SSN is 111-1112, so and my wife's is 111 or 222-222-2221, or was it three, or was it 12222 at the end? So let's go ahead and see this again in action. SSM regex dot search. I'm going to say, sorry, match is equal to SSM regex dot search string. So I can pa just pass in the string parameter and it will search it just fine. And match dot group, it'll give me 11112. Just give me the first one. So let's uh, let me print out match again. So give me just the first one. Second one match. Match dot groups. Nope. Match. So what does search do? SSN regex dot search. Looks, scan through the string for a match, and doesn't, and it's too big to say. Let's go ahead and see if going out here ma makes it easy to read, and return a corresponding string. So perhaps it just returns the first one. Hmm, something to keep in mind. Ah, so group will find the first one, but if we use this, find all in string, or sorry, it's Python, so it's undercased, find all. Then that will give me a list of all the matches that it finds. So group finds the first one. Group finds the first one, and as we'll learn in, into a second, in a second, it'll be useful for grouping it up. But find all. What find all will do is it will find all of the all of the instances inside the string that match this regex. Make sense? So it found all the social security numbers in the string. Yes. In idle, just depends on what you're working with. Right now, we're going to work in idle. I'll move on to later. But the first, but otherwise, you want to use basically a lot of what we're doing here. Um, all right. So the other big thing about so what's the whole grouping thing? The idea with groups is that we can uh, create groups of a regex. So here's an example of that right over here. Three digits, three uh, in parentheses, followed by a dash, followed by these other digits. Here, what it's doing is that it's creating a group for the area code and a group for the phone number so that it can grab those pieces individually. So, um, so for instance, the, what we'll see here is that if we put this into the shell, it compiles that regular expression. And what it will do is that it will it will search for the phone number. It'll grab the first one. So notice that it doesn't read those uh, the parentheses literally. What it will do is that it'll grab the first part of the regular expression and then the second part of the regular expression. So it gets broken up into parts. And you can use the groups to print it out all at once. We don't, we, I won't really re be returning to this. That's why I'm not really bothering going through with it. I'm more with interested in like uh, find all and stuff. Um, so if you need to, but that mean, but the main point of this is that parentheses 
are used to create groups in regular expressions. So if you actually want to match a parentheses, you're going to have to escape it using a slash parentheses. So here, notice that it goes slash parentheses, slash d, slash d, slash d, slash per, close parentheses. So my phone number is open paren 145, close paren. So now let's um, look at um, the pipe character. So again, the pipe character is pretty much one of those characters that you only use if you're in computer science. Um, specifically, that's the one if you press shift and it's on your backslash, right? That vertical tick mark. It's called a pipe because it looks like a pipe. I know. We're great at naming things. Um, now, in... Um, in Python, this can be, sorry, in, in Bash and other scripts, this is often used to change stuff together. Here, we're using it as the or symbol, essentially. So their example is that if I've got a regular expression like this, r, sorry, r slash, uh, r Batman, or Tina Fey. Let's go ahead and turn that into a regular expression. Yeah. Are you compile Batman or Tina Fey? This regular expression will match Batman or Tina Fey. Dot search. <laughs> right? That will find Batman. But it will also match if I decide to do that. No, 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 Tina Fey. Right, to use the example from the book. Right, so it matches either or. It, ma it will match either one of those. Which is pretty useful, right? So, like, for instance, uh, a feasible thing you could use it for is that basically if you wanted to check uh, everything, like check numbers, you could match something that matched a number or a dash, right, which is often used for an empty space. So, um, let's see. Um, another interesting thing that we can do with the groups and the parentheses is optional characters. So, let's go with, let's go ahead and make another bat regex. Uh, bat regex is equal to re dot compile r bat whoa man okay that regex dot search the go with Batman the animated series. Right, if we search for that, we'll find Batman, right? It matches Batman. So what does this open parentheses, close parentheses, with the W-O and the question mark do it? Well, if I take this and I turn this into Batwoman, the animated series, it'll match Batwoman. So what the question mark here does is that we can use the question mark to declare that the preceding group is optional. Right, it's optional. We can include, so we want 
a BAT followed by possibly a WO. It's okay if it's not there. Followed by a man. Okay? So, bat man and bat woman are valid, but if we, for instance, tried to see, uh, seeing, uh, for instance, Batmobile, the animated series, it doesn't come up with anything because that doesn't match. Because the regular expression, this, does not match anything in there. It goes B-A-T, oh, nope, it's not followed by a W-O, what about an M? It's followed by an M, but not an A. Oh, look for another B, there's no B, can't find anything. So, this, so the regular expressions just parse this thing, going left to right, looking for something that matches. So, um, so this is pretty useful. For instance, we can, um, for instance, search for, we can adjust our phone, uh, the phone regular expression to be a bit more, um, to be a bit more, let's say, um, powerful, a bit more flexible. Re dot compile. Um, so R here, and let's go ahead and so we already so a phone number is three digits, three digits, and I'll start con and I'll connect them however they need to be connected soon. Followed by a dash, followed by four digits. Only sometimes people leave out the dash, right? Right, the dash can be left out there. And there might be a dash between the area code. So there might be a dash between the area code and the not area code. Or somebody could just put a space in. This is optional too. And then the uh, area code, well, that open parentheses is optional as well. Yeah, this is starting to get co complicated looking. Don't worry about it too badly. And then the close, it makes much easier, more sense when you're constructing it yourself. And then the close parentheses is also possibly optional. Surprisingly, I did not mess up with my keystrokes there. I'm actually as surprised as you are. Okay, so here we're saying it is a open parentheses, which is optional, followed by three digits, followed by a closed parentheses, which is optional, followed by a dash or space, optionally, followed by three digits, followed by an optional dash, followed by four digits. So for in, so let's go ahead and try this out. Phone regex dot, um, dot search. Let's go ahead and look for that in my number is 111111111. So it matched that. So it matched the series of digits, right? It also matches my phone number is, you know, these numbers over here. Or my number is, that. Right, so, the, so that was pretty powerful right over there. And some regexes do end up being insane and incomprehensible. That's not your fault if you can't read it. Some of them are terrible. Uh, the, the holy grail of that is regex for email. Um, email regular expression that, sorry, email address that 99% works at email regex, uh, that, that works 99% of the time, emailregex.com. So that's how you know it's valid. They got the URL for it. 
just copy paste it uh, below. There you go. There's the stand, there's the regular expression. And it works on 99% of it. And this has to do with, and this and they have a nice big flow chart uh, built up from it. One of, followed by one of these, followed by one of those, followed by an and then it loops around in the flow chart, followed by the at symbol. That's really the only part that's kind of guaranteed, that's really recognizable in there. Turns out that, that actually email addresses really are kind of flexible as to what you can put into them. Uh, Python, oh, there's one for Python. So beginning there, so we'll learn what these caret and dollar sign mean, but and we'll also learn what this means, which is creating a custom group. So um, PHP is some kind of a nightmare over there, um, if you couldn't tell. Um, and Perl and Ruby is kind of a nightmare too. Um, bonus, what does the following regex do? I don't want to know. Um, so. The, but anyway, it turns out that basically uh, there is no perfect email uh, thing because it's a bit too difficult to do those. Uh, you can find the specification for emails at five th at RFC request for comment five three two two. That's the. Um, but it turns out that you know again regular expressions are, aren't necessarily powerful enough to validate an email address. All of them. Um, but you can get pretty close. All right, so um, anyway, so let's go ahead and talk about the uh, clean star. Let's go back to our bat regex. So I'm going to start doing this over here in um, in a script file rather than uh, rather than doing it on idle now. Okay, so let's go ahead and do um, so that way I can start uploading it. So. Um, regex demo one dot py so import re let's import re um, and I'll just do this as a script without like bothering with the main stuff or anything like that so let's go ahead and create a bat regex again bat regex is equal to re dot compile and we are going to compile right last time for we, what we had was um, bat Whoa. Man. Right? We had that. Compile bat woman, which would match either Batman or Bat Woman. You can think of this, the the clean you can think of this question mark here as saying this is optional. You can you can match zero or one of these things. Right? Okay, so let's go ahead and see that bat regex dot. So let's go ahead and see um, result is equal to um, bat regex. And I'm going to be using just find all because I like that. Find all in, I'm going to call this a, a target. So the string that I'm searching, it's my target. The animated adventures of Batman and Batwoman. Okay. Find all in target. And then what we'll do is that we'll print our result. Okay, and I'll run it and I get nothing. Why don't I get anything? Because case matters, right? I have capital B. I'm looking for capital B, Batman. And uh, so actually there is a way I can make it case insensitive by doing, I think, re.i right over here. And that makes it a case insensitive. Oh, interesting. But let's go ahead and do... 
So let's go ahead and fix this. Batman and Batwoman. Oh, apparently this doesn't work with groups. So, let's see. No, no, no. I think find all has an issue with it because of the um, because of the um, it doesn't like doing it returns the group oh because it returns the groups that's why oh didn't do the raw string. Let's see if that matters. Nope. Has to do. Um, let's see. I bet you, though, if I put it in parentheses, let's see what happens. It has to do with the fact that we used a WO for the group, right? So I'll go back to using um, search, actually. So let's go ahead and see search over here. So, the adventures of Batwoman. And it will match Batman because that's the first thing it matches, right? Searching for the first thing that it matches over there. Okay. And next is the target. So, so it's, we'll search that. If I put Batwoman and Batwoman, it will match the first Batwoman it sees, the one at index 27, and Batman, again, it's just going to match the first thing it finds that matches that pattern. All right, so um, let's go ahead and get rid of Batman over there. So Batwoman, Batman. Right, it says it matched Batman. That's fine. And if I want to actually get, you know, the thing that was matched, I can just do result oh dot group over here. <coughs> Batman. All right. So this again, the question mark is zero or one of. Now we also have this operator over here, the star operator that I discussed before of. This is zero or any of. So it matches both the adventure of Batman, the, event, the animated adventures of Batman. It also uh, matches the adventures of Batwoman, right, Batwoman. But it also matches the adventures of bat wo wo man bat wo wo man or bat Whoa, 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 men. Or bat, whoa, 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 right, and so on and so forth. It will match any number of woes in there, okay? But if I go W O W O W O W O W, right, we don't get a result. In fact, we get an error when I try to print out the result because there's none, right? Because it doesn't match there, right? It's got to be W O together, right? We're saying. The Adventures of Bat Woman. All right, so um, so I feel like I could add this over here. So like I could do, um, so I could do something like this. Uh, so I could do like with a clean star over here. The Adventures of Batman, but also, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and put a space there, of na 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 na, right? Batman, right? Because it's saying match as many, and it matches any and, uh, NA blanks as you want, right? As many of those as you want to match, as many of those as you can match, followed by bat, that might, a Batman or a Batwoman, right? 
So if I turn that to na 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 Batwoman, it could actually be like that. So the end result is, is that you probably just want either woe or no woe in there. It's either going to be man or woman. So in that case, you probably do want to use the question mark there. So you only will match what you're intending to match. Right? One of the big things you can accidentally do with regular expressions is write a regular expression that matches uh, more than what you want, right? For instance, if you're, I've got to be very careful with the way some questions are worded, because otherwise your answers can be very technically correct. For instance, if I were to say, uh, for instance, I can actually write a regular expression very easily that will match 100% of all email addresses, right? Let me go ahead and write it for you right now, okay? It's very simple. Uh, so the first thing I do is I put down period, which is the wildcard character, which means it matches anything. Followed by a plus, which means at least one of anything. And there, it will match every single possible email address that's possible, right? Let me test it. Uh, Andrew.Rosen at temple.edu. You'll also mention it at temple. Dot and temple.com and temple. Dot, 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 dot. So it matches both all the correct email addresses, but also stuff that isn't email addresses. So the key is sometimes you want to make sure you write an email that matches only valid email addresses and not invalid ones or anything else. And that's where the trick comes in, right? It's easy to write a regular expression that matches anything. It's making it not match things that you don't want it to. That's the tricky part, which gets us into the... Uh, to the next point, I guess, that I wanted to make, which is um, which is this is the plus mark over here, right? So we have the clean star and then we have the plus operator, okay? So here we have the animated adventures of no, 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 Batwoman. So plus means I need at least one of. So it's no longer going to match Batman. It will match Batwoman or bat whoa whoa man but it won't match batman anymore right if i try to do batman there's not at least one wo in there so we're going to get an error right and you can kind of see like there's various and you can hypothesize that there's obviously situations where you want either zero or one or something you want zero to as many things as possible like Okay, I want to, if there's ma if there's Nas in front of that, I'd like to match that, or I'd leak like at least one of something. It has to be there, but I don't know what it needs to be, right? So, um, so okay. So let's see. So we've done question mark, and then we've already kind of talked about. Um, this before we can match um, we can match a bunch of other stuff we can match uh, sp a specific number of repetitions with uh, using curly braces so let's go ahead and keep in the theme here joker reg x is equal to re dot compile um, r H A three to five. So here we're using the curly braces, which actually don't, which get a lot of uh, use in other programming languages, but not so much in in Python. Those are located by the brackets, or on the brackets rather, in case you can't find them on your keyboard. Okay. Uh, so here this is a regular expression that will match um, ha. So it won't match ha, right? Gives me an error if I search for ha. But it will match ha, ha, ha. Or not. 
Oh, right, because I'm still searching back reg, using back regex. So let's switch it to joker regex over there. Now run it. So it'll match ha ha ha. It'll match ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha, yeah, okay. Swear I'm not mad. And then ha 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 ha. Right, it'll match five of them as well. So what curly braces specify is that it will it says um, it uses this comma as a delimiter and it says it will match at least this many and at most this many, right? So at least five, sorry, at least three, at most five, right? So um, anything that's, so if I try to do more than four ha, uh, more than five ha's, oh, it actually gets me something. But how many did it capture? It captured five ha's, right? Because five ha's is part of six, right? The joker, let's switch this up to the target. The joker says, ha, 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 six ha's, right? And it found what? Five ha's in there. So it says, aha, I found five ha's. Excellent. Right? These things are greedy. Yes. It is case sensitive. So if I want to try it without being case sensitive, let's go ahead and do re dot i. And what I'll do is I'll make this these last two over here like that. And notice now that it will catch ha 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 ha. So if you want to make it case insensitive, then in, when you compile it, put comma re dot i. Those are for special options. And re dot i is a, is a built-in option for it to be case insensitive. Okay, so it matches only these five of it because those are the because it looks. Oh, there's an H there, followed by an A. H there, an A. H there, an A. Oh, great, we've matched it. Is there any more I can match? Yes, there's another one. Okay, that's four. Can I match any more? Five. Okay, I've met my quota. Fantastic. Right. If, on the other hand, I wanted to make sure that there were only five and it ended with like five, right? I can look for this dollar sign, which says I want it to, um, there's different ways I can do this depending on what I'm looking for. Dollar sign at the end says um, that it needs to be, that, that we're going to find five ha's and then that's the end of it. Nothing else after that. Nothing follows the, uh, the ha's. Still matches it, right? But it matched ha, 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 and then the two undercase ones. So if we want to be really specific, we'll put a space saying it's got to be a space followed by five ha's. And now we'll say there's too many of it, right? So getting it to match just specifically what you want is a tricky business. We'll learn more about the space other words. Um, meanwhile, I want to talk more about the curly braces here. Um, yes? The what? The curly braces act like a delimiter or the dollar sign? Well, um, hmm. I'm not sure if I should have said that. Um, what it says is that basically that the uh, dollar sign says, hey, end the line here. End the string here. Um, what we're going to do is that we are going to say, so what I want, so the other things I want to uh, take a look at is, um, is what happens if I leave out the five over K. Remember, I said the first number's at least. So if I do three comma, it will say at least three, right? Three do as many as possible. If I don't have the five in, sorry, if I don't have the, comma, the, the first comma in, but I leave in the five, it will, this says at, at most five ha's will match, right? So you can leave out the at least or the at most. And if you leave out the comma and just put one number, it says we will match exactly that many. Mm -hmm. So 
All right, so um, so this is the uh, important bit, which is greedy and non-greedy matching. So you've got HA, and it can do, and it can match three, four, or five ha 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 ha's. Right? It could match three ha's, or four ha's, or five ha's. So you might wonder why it returns five ha's. Right? Whenever I do the, whenever I try the matching, it was returning five ha's instead of three to five ha's. Or like, why wouldn't it give me three ha's or four, four ha's? Those were valid, but it would always give me the biggest match possible. And that's because of the way it's built in. Uh, Python is greedy by default. In other words, it tries to eat the biggest thing it can. It tries to find the biggest thing because it assumes that you want the biggest thing possible. Everybody likes biggest, right? Bigger is better. So they say, I'm going to give you the biggest thing. So, um... So there's if we do it non-greedy though, it's gonna try to be or it's gonna be try to be lazy and return the smallest possible string. So let's see what that looks like. So here's the greedy version that we were doing. Three to five over here. But then if we throw the question mark over here, it actually gets a different meaning. Right? Question mark before or after parentheses meant optional. Here it means non-greedy. Let's take a look at that in action. So if I instead go 3 to 5 with a question mark, it'll print out ha ha ha, which means that it will go for the shortest thing possible, which is pretty useful sometimes. All right, so now we'll go back to learning about the find all method. So I've been using search so far. I'm a big fan of find all, right? Search finds every the first thing. Find all matches everything. So um, here's an example of that at over here where we've got, um, right, um, right? And I'll use the example that I was using earlier. So let's go with um, SSN regex is equal to re dot compile right, r and the slash d again means any dig any digit character a zero one two three four five six seven eight nine three of them followed by a dash followed by two of them followed by a dash followed by four numbers. Right, that's a right, that's a social security number, and let's go ahead and say, sure, guy who definite. Let's go ahead and actually make this a multi-line string so that you can see it. Uh, sure, guy who definitely. works for the IRS, you can have, you can have my SSN. Mine is 123-45-6789. Apologies again to anybody who, who's in this class who has that social security number. And then Oh, my wife's two. It's, I can't believe I married this moron. <laughs> um, that's, so it's, uh, two, it's 222 dash 222, or sorry, 2 dash 2222, right? Or whatever, right? You can put anything in. I wouldn't suggest putting yours in just out of habit, right? You could if you wanted to, but let's go ahead and that's now the target. So let's go ahead and search SSN regex. So if we now do SSN search for the target, it's going to find the very first thing I can. And it's going to find, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, right? But it finds the first one. If I want to get all of them, I have to do find all. So if I search the target, You'll want to remove the group because it's going to return a list. 
So there, there's the social security numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a bunch of twos, right? Um, and just as a note here, because it is tax season, the IRS never calls you. Never, ever, ever, ever. If a person, if you get a call from a p person pr uh, pretending to be from the IRS, either hang up immediately if you answer the phone, don't answer it, or if you really want to, I suppose, just try to waste their time as much as possible. Right? Um, right? They're typically going to tell you that somebody's on their way to arrest you, so um, if you can bring tears on demand, this is a great time to have a to use that skill to like start suddenly break down and start crying and pleading. Uh, they'll ask for money and then basically come up with like reasons why you can't get it. Um, um, I typically like to end these things by faking your own death, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, the more time you can waste with them on the phone, the more time they're not going to be scamming somebody else's grandfather. Um, um, so, you know, the people are people fall for scams and it's very depressing. All right, so um, so find all doesn't return a match object. It returns a list of strings, right, as we saw. Um, if there are groups, then it will return a list of tuples. A uh, tuple is like a list, but it's like an immutable list. And you can, the difference is essentially for you, we'll get into it later, but the difference is that it's got parentheses as opposed to uh, um, it's got parentheses as opposed to um, brackets. So let's go ahead and like break it up into parentheses like this. Like, right, here's the first part, the second part, and the third part. If I break it up like that, if I put parentheses around it and group up the first part, the second part, and the third part, and we do find all, we'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and there's the first tuple. Right, and then the second tuple, right? So all the stuff grouped together. I typically don't use groups too much, and most of the homework won't need to involve using grouping, so, um, you know. Um, all right, so now let's go ahead and learn what I find to be the most fun part of this. Um, right, so we've learned about slash D, okay? All right, so now, um, Let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and I'm going to start. Let's see. So first off, give me a second. Uh, CD. Let's see. Uh, more slash user slash share. And if you're using a, a Mac or something, this might work as well. A more dict uh, slash American English. There we go. So for spell checking purposes, um, oh, I don't want to use more. I want to use less. Less is more, but better. There we go. Literally, less is more, but better. Um, so this is a dictionary file. Notice that it doesn't have any dic uh, definitions. That's not what your computer cares about in terms of dictionaries. It cares about it for the purpose of spelling, right? So this is a big file on my computer that has basically all the words in the American English dictionary that can use for spelling. It's not only American English, though, right? It, in, the, in the folder, I also have uh, British English as well as Brazilian. So let's take a look. British English doesn't really look too different, but Brazilian hopefully will. Yep, that one looks pretty different, right? So I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see. Let's go ahead and see what I can do with that. So I'm just going to keep this UR. I'm just going to keep this here. I'm going to grab it. Whoops. I'm going to grab it for future reference over here, right? Because I want to use it later. Okay. Because so, okay, I'm just grabbing that that diction that that directory for future reference. Uh, if you're running on Windows, tough luck. You won't really be able to follow along too much with this. Although you will have, 
although with the assignment you will get a file that has all these words in it, okay? Um, anyway, so let's talk about the fun, uh, what I consider the fun NAR. Let's go to regexer. So we've learned that, um, that basically that we've got these character classes over here, right? Um, we have slash D, okay, which matches any number. Right, any single number, and if hopefully if you if you're in the back, you can see it's matching only one single number at a time. It's slightly split up, right? So I can here this will match a number and a space, right? So it's not going to match two numbers, but it'll match a number and a space. There we go. So that should be way more apparent for the people in the back. Okay. This is a character class, meaning a digit. There's other character classes too. Um, there's anything that's not a digit. So there, there's the inverse character class, which is also pretty easy to, which is actually pretty easy to remember. You l use lower cases for the shortcuts and you use upper cases for the inverses of the shortcut. So slat, capital D gets me anything that's not a digit. Everybody see that? It's everything that is not a digit. Okay? So anything that is not a digit, um, okay, let's take a look at what el other stuff though. What if I want to find stuff that's like a letter? We have slash W for that, which matches any word character, which is alphanumeric. So letters, numbers, okay, matches letters, numbers, and the underscore. Why the underscore? Because we use that commonly in programming. Right? So it matches. So for instance, if I want to match something that is at least. So now if I do slash W plus, it matches anything that's a word character um, or at least one of. So it matches 1, 2, 31. It also matches uh, um, this underscore var underscore name. So it's a very powerful thing there. Um, Capital W means anything that that is not a word character, not an, a number or a not a number or a cap or a um, underscore or a letter, and at least one of because of that plus mark. Okay, so you've got your dub. So you've got your D for your digits. You've got your um, w, your W for your word character, so anything you would want to write a word in programming, right? Because variable names, right? Anything that would basically make up a variable name, like X2 or my other name is cooler. Okay, so we'll go ahead and then there's one more, which is slash s, which matches anything that's white space. Slash s for space, anything that is white space. In other words, a space, a tab, the enter key, line breaking. And of course, capital S matches anything that's not that. Those are pretty useful. Now, are those the any... Uh, are those the only so those are what we call the character classes that are built in are but those are the only ones that are those are only the ones that are built in you can create any character class you want and that's where it really gets powerful um for instance if i wanted to find a if i wanted to match any word that had two vowels in it like need this is how i could do it so let's go ahead and do need and apple and uh, thorough. Did they spell it right? Is it thorough? I don't know. Thorough? Yep. Just looked weird now that I typed it out and it's all big. Okay. So what I can do is I can create something called a character class, which works as follows. Open bracket, close bracket, and then I match any one of the things in here. So if I put in A E I O U, it matches a vowel. If I say I would like, if I do that, that means two of, right? So that matches 
two vowels. And so now what I could do is if I want to match any word that has two vowels in it, I can do any letter character. Well, actually, I don't want, I want words. So, yeah, but we'll do with this first. Any number of letter characters followed by two vowels followed by, well, actually, we should probably use a clean star over here. So any number of, of characters followed by, I'll uh, follow by any number of ca other characters. So need and thorough both have two vowels, right? So need matches because, hey, it matched T-H-O-R, and then it said, here's the two vowels, and then we have G-H. Make sense? So this means one of, so we find anything that's a word. However, uh, I just realized, of course, well, not just realized, I realized it a minute ago, that this would match 2E2, which doesn't really seem like a word. So we should probably make a character class, a class that's just for letters to go over here. So, um, so you might go, OK, so anything that is an A, B, C, D, E, that seems really, really <coughs> annoying. Fortunately, you can actually like actually use something that's intuitive here. A through Z. In, in this notation, when you're using it inside a character class, you can go A dash Z. And it will interpret that as, oh, you don't mean actual dash, you mean A through Z. You'd like A through Z, wouldn't you? Right? And if I wanted to include capital letters, I'd have to put that into A through Z's over here. So any number of A through Z's, including zero, followed by two vowels, followed by any number of A through Z's. Right? So that means matches apple, it matches need, it also matches the ee -E in two, so I suppose I should change this to a plus, meaning it needs to be at least one a through z, followed by two vowels, followed by at least one a through z. So, Let's go ahead and um, try this out for size here. Um, sorry, A through Z could be my. Well, it could be. I mean, it will ma it will work. I mean, yeah, but then you have two vowels. That's what will count the first. Yeah. Well, let's see. I mean, it'll, it'll need four A's to do it. But I don't know if there's any words like that. Again, I, we, we have to find the specific A. I'd have to find the specific A. A-U-T-O. A-U-T-O? Yeah. Ah. So, yeah. That is tricky there. So it'd be like A to Z, but not a vowel optional? Hmm. So you'll see that these get tricky. But I want to move on to my, to my, to an, another example, to an, uh, an example. Um, however, if I just want to count up the number of words that have two vowels in it, I can just use this and say, hey, there's two vowels in a row here. So um, now, if I wanted to count up how many actually had two vowels in it, um, well, I'd need a dictionary file. I have one, so let's go ahead and use it. So uh, dictionary is equal to uh, open. Um, and here, it's not in the same directory, so I have to use absolute path, which is why I bothered you know, figuring out where it was. So this is my dictionary file. It may it will vary based on where it is. 
Um, I'm going to open it with read access, and so now let's go ahead and uh, start reading it. So um, let's go ahead and write double val equals re dot compile. So anything that has two vowels in it. So a e i o u followed by exactly two vowels. Okay, and then let's go ahead and write this. So we don't need this anymore. We don't need this anymore. Four word in dictionary. Go ahead and do. So we've already compiled it. So um, match is equal to re dot. It's not re, but um, double val dot search word print match dot group. And let's run it and see how bad this goes. Uh, none type. So that means I couldn't find anything there. So if match is not none, love it when I can do uh, when I can say it like that. If the match is not none, it's also the same as saying not equal to none. If match is not none, print out uh, print out the match. To simply print it out, uh, only the match. Ah, well, I don't want to print out the match. I'd like to print out the. Let's print out the word, comma, and then the ma what it matched in there. Oh, it's printing out. Oh, it's printing out the new line that it's reading from each line. So let's go ahead and do uh, word is equal to word dot st um, strip, right? because we're reading from a file. It's got all those pesky new lines in there. So for instance, it's matching zoology in the double O in zoology. It's matching the double O's in zoo. It's matching the IE in Zweiback, which apparently is a word. Now I'm curious, what the heck is that? A form of rusk eaten in Scandinavia, Germany, Austria, France, the Netherlands, Made with eggs and baked twice. It's Prussian, apparently. Okay. Well then. I'm like, that sounds familiar. And now I know why. Right? So it also has got r the OE and wrongdoer, right? So it matches all these things. And it went through it really, really, really quickly. So, um, right, in fact, we could probably count that out. Count is equal to zero. Uh, we could print it out. Count is equal to count plus one. And then we could print the count at the end and see how many things we matched. Thirty-three thousand six hundred and sixty-one. That's a lot of words with double vowels in them. Mind you, we're also getting all those weird words that, you know, and there's, you, I suppose you could say, hey, untidly unwieldiness and unwieldinesses, right? Does that really count? Well, according to my dictionary file, it does, so. And that's the thing I'm going uh, with there. Um, all right, so. The last thing I wanted to uh, talk about was the last thing I brought up in last class. Um, we're going to, and I'll be going over a bit more with these, which is the substitution, right? Right, and I think it's just worthwhile going up again, uh, bringing this up again. Um, so I'm going to comment this out and go back to our regular expression, uh, to this example, right? 
my wife's probably upset that she married an idiot like me who will give out uh, her the social the first the social security number to the first guy who asked. So let's go ahead and we will use the sub method, right? Which will substitute strings, and it says you what what do you want to substitute, right? And what do you want to su and what are we searching for? So we put our target over here and saying we want to put what in target? Let's put redacted in all caps in between here. Whoops. Mine is redacted. Oh, my wife's too. It is redacted. So it will find all of them and it will remove all of them. Right, and replace it. If I wanted to just straight up remove it, by the way, I could do it with this. Right, replace it with an empty string. So this is a very powerful tool. Right, I'm creating a new string that has the old strings replaced. Right, right. Result is equal to removing that stuff. So it's very, very, very powerful. Um, So we'll learn more about how to use it with groups next time, the substitution operation. But uh, the, our homework for regular expressions will come after, uh, will probably be next week, uh, once the um, hurricane tracker is done. But it will be a lot more of this kind of stuff. Once this is done, we'll move into minute some utilities, how like how pip works in Python. And we're going to use that to look at working with PDF. Uh, to Excel spreadsheets and, and PDFs. Um, we're going to also do some other basic file operations in there. But the point being is that uh, regular expressions are going to be very powerful. And we're going to start looking at like passwords and why we should not have weak passwords and what weak passwords are and how to create better ones. Right? And really, um, you know, for instance, this is a terrible password. Why is that a terrible password? How do you remember? Yeah, how the heck do I remember it? That's why it's a terrible password. I don't, I mean, you can use a password manager, sure, but if you forget your password to your password manager, well, you're, you're up the creek without a paddle. Um, right? So you all, on the other hand, something like this, Sunny ice cream treat, which is not a password I use, but I totally could have, is actually a fantastic password because it's, let's count it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 13, 18 characters long. Yes? Um, I don't know. There's a website that you can go to where if you type in like password, it, it tells you how long it would take for someone to crack it. And like a password that's over seven characters would take like a year. Yeah, depend, it really depends. Also, if you're using an ink, if you're using just regular letters or not. Um, let's see. Do you happen to know uh, where it is? Oh, I it was a couple years back, but I forget. Uh, how long would it take to crack my password? Let's see if it will come up. Randomize. Oh, how secure is my password? Sounds good. So let's go with uh, let's go with sunny ice cream treat. That's pretty good because again, it's super super long, right? It's really long, even though that it's not really much. Whereas uh, something else where that I might use that uh, let's go with. Um, Whereas, like a password I might use, I've been using like some pass something similar to passwords that I currently use, takes about 97 years. But then my wife has to ask me, where are all the, you know, punctuation marks in there? All right, so we'll see you on, uh, on in lab.